I showed that part of the video to my farm manager and he burst out laughing. How can you say a katina katina lay just 50 eggs or an average of 50 eggs? It is not true. That hey, welcome. This is KT Samuel and I'm back again. Your favorite snow farmer. <laughs> anyway, um, today I want to talk about uh, a video that a lot of people have been sharing with me because I have a lot of people texting me. Uh, most of the time they send me videos and the ones that I feel terrible about I am forced to react to it um, so this particular video I realized that about hundred thousand people watched it and there's a lot of misinformation in it I'm sure a lot of you people who are already interested in snow farming have have watched it so but um, I'm new here I'm not really a youtuber um, I don't want to have any YouTube infringement copyright infringement so I would not be attaching the video to this particular video I'm making, um, but I'll be answering the questions, some of the questions that were asked in the interview. And then if you've watched it, of course, you can, you would know which video I'm talking about. So it's a lady interviewing a gentleman about snow farming and there are some things that did not really sit well to me. I mean, with me. Um, so just stay glued to this video because there's a lot of misinformation and I want to correct them in this video. I also want to say that the fact is I have nothing really to gain from um, spreading the right information, right? I am not, I am not into the building of the trench um, um, housing system. I am, so if I'm trying to educate people, correcting them on the right path, I have nothing to gain from it really. I just, I'm somebody who was interviewed by Charles Entry on, on YouTube and after that interview, I had a lot of calls and some of the calls that came through, the people were trying to um, bring to me their own perception about snow farming when they haven't even done snow farming before, but they just got it off YouTube. And there's no way I can call Charles Entry to my farm every week for me to address some of the issues I have or the calls that I get from people. So that forced me into going into uh, YouTube. And so if you, if you check, you see that I only started three months ago. Um, so I have really nothing to gain, but I think that it is just right for me to, um, correct the things that are going wrong. Anyway, shout out to Mr. Kumi in, in, uh, Kuwait. He sent me this particular video. He's the last person who sent me this video. And I, trust me, I wasn't able to sleep the whole night after watching this video, after seeing all that misinformation. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, a part of the video where he talks about snails eating the cement and they dying and all of that. But you know the funny thing? The funny thing is that most of the greenhouses, in fact, okay, most of the greenhouses that you see in Ghana and in Nigeria, most of them, the base is cemented. It's concrete blocks, cemented. So ask them that if the snails are dying from the cement, how, why is the, the base of, of the uh, greenhouses cement? Now, in his video, I see that the, the base, which is cement, has been coated with, with a polythene. It's a rubber polythene. And that, again, is unhealthy for the snails because they eat the rubber and then that is poisonous to them. Now, if you go to these greenhouses and you look at the base, you see that the snails are eating the base, the cement. And this is even worse than the, than the trench houses. Now, this really happens. It's true. It happens that the snails eat the walls. Now, if you go to South America, um, the place where you see snails, you realize that they are nibbling on the lower part of the wall. It's because the snails are lacking calcium. They are lacking calcium. So if you're doing the trench housing system, all you need to do is, is provide them their calcium. Give them calcium once a week. Put their oyster shell powder there once a week. And then they get their calcium. They don't need to go attacking the wall. They don't only attack the wall. They also try to eat the shell of, of, their, of their fellow snails. So it is an important thing. Give them calcium and you're not going to be having this challenge. Well, um, we've had that experience in my farm where snails were eating the cement. One, they did not die. Two, it was because I had a worker who was not doing his job as he's supposed to. He was not giving them the calcium at all. And at the time I was still in the corporate industry. I sometimes come to the farm like once in two weeks or once in three weeks 
So obviously, if you have a worker who is not doing the right thing, the snails will then go attack the wall. The third thing is that if you have a wall that was not properly constructed, I mean, in terms of ratio, the sand is more than the, the cement, obviously it becomes soft. So on my farm, we have 10 pens. Um, that was the first pen we, we, pens we built. 10 pens and not a single nibble on the wall. Not a single snail nibble on the wall. They, do not, they will not find the need to go um, eating the wall. And the wall is solid hard. So this is to address the issue of if you do your trench house system, they will eat the cement, they will eat the cement. Please forget about all that, all that thing. It's just a marketing strategy for you to go um, build a greenhouse. And also in this greenhouse, like I said, most of them, the base is cemented. It is blocks. So then what are you running away from? Did you get it? Also, you, you do realize that the pathway that has been created for the human to walk on in the greenhouse, all is concrete, all is cemented. So then what's the point? Why, why, why do we keep um, misinforming people? Because the pathway in the greenhouse is made of cement. I have seen some where even the pathway side and side, they put blocks there so that no snail can climb and sometimes the blocks are even hollow and that's again dangerous the snail can go get stuck in there and and it will die being in that hole and so if you have blocks sitting in your in your greenhouse then why you complain about the trench house system that is the concrete pen why i mean just give them calcium and that resolves your issue just give them calcium and make sure you build well use hard cement let the wall be very hard they're not uh, and i can show you evidence to it I can show you evidence to it and I would want people to read themselves. The second thing is that in the video he says um, the the things they have planted there serves as um, shade, serves as feeding, it serves as uh, mulch and all of that. Interesting. <laughs> Well, you see, in the same video, yeah, in the same video, I want you people, if you know the video I'm talking about, you can scroll. And then the video, all the cocoyam leaves you see there, if you if you can show me any cocoyam leaves that um, the snails, it looks like the snails have eaten, please um, let me know. Because what the reality, the reality on the ground is that every single day, they have to take actual feeding into the, the the greenhouses just like the trench system they have to take formulated feed the formulated feed i don't like they they take formulated feed to the snails every day and again this is what is constituting to the fact that some restaurants don't even want to buy snails that are being farmed anymore because the taste of the meat is different from the real wild snail meat so they take formulated feed over there. I've seen greenhouses where they take oranges there, they take watermelon there, they take pawpaw there, they take all sort of feeding. Sometimes they even cut the leaves, the contumery, and then put it down for them. You realize that in the same video, the the cocoyam leaves are so high that in the video when they were touring in the in the greenhouse, again, they were even walking on the soil of the of the greenhouse, which means stepping on snails, stepping on eggs. Well, in that same video, you see that there's a lot of sun. There's a lot of sun in the in the in the in the greenhouse to the extent that the snails in the video were hiding in the soil. They were hiding in the soil. Now, if if, the, if that shade was enough enough for them, you realize that they will just be laying under the contour, like we see in the bush, you know. But this ones they were hiding under the soil in the greenhouse. So. I mean, it's really not giving them enough shade. That place is really hot. The sun is blazing directly on the soil and it's and it's making it hot. Now, if you know diffusion, you know that if this place is hot, if, even though the snail is, is laying and is, is, is under, let's say, a contumery or a cocoa yam leaf shade, you realize that so far as this part is getting hot, the, because of diffusion, eventually this part will become hot. So, I mean, anyway. Now he, he also says that they have started introducing mulch into the greenhouses. Can you imagine mulch that um, we we in the green we in the trench housing system that's what we use. Now he's saying greenhouse farms need mulch. 
I thought I thought the, veg the vegetation was covering for them. So then why why do you need mulch? It's because you have realized that uh, there's no way you can have a consistent cover over the snails in the greenhouse. At a point, some of the leaves will fall off. Some of them will do that. So eventually, you have a lot of sun coming in there, which is a threat to the snails. So. Um, I mean, Charlie, this thing is just it's just common sense and I'm sure you people realize it and you think through it, you see, you see where this thing is. So in, in, this, in this particular session of the video, he's talking about um, the seasons where snails begin to lay, right? And what, what confuses me is that the, the reason why we're farming snails is because we want to give them a very controlled environment so that we do not really have to follow the times and seasons of the weather, right? So you're supposed to be farming in them in such a way that you provide them with humidity so that even if they have to go into estivation, they don't have to go into it for a long period of time, like just like when they're in the wild, like six months and all of that. So... So just just like some time back, coconuts um, had its seasons, and currently in Ghana we have hybrid coconuts. So all year round we have coconuts. We're still we're trying to have that situation for snails, right? So so far as you're farming them, you're supposed to create a conducive environment for them. But in the interview, he seems to make it look like even though you're farming them, you're still following the times and seasons, like. When it's raining around around you snails should start laying and when it's um when it stops raining everywhere snails will stop being active you see the only time things like that would happen is when in your farm there's not enough humidity and just like i said in my last video look you need to create an a humid environment for them so when you realize that they are going on estivation then you know that there's something wrong. If you do your research, you know that some farms outside um, Ghana and other controlled environments, you realize that some of them, they have the, the gun temperatures where they check the temperature. So if it's, be, if, it, if it's more than 30 degrees Celsius, then they have a way of increasing the, the humidity. And if it's very low, they have a way of um, 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 making the place a bit conducive for the snails. So if you if you have a farm and you still have to go by the seasons of the snails in the wild, then you're really not doing any, any farming. You're just I mean like you're just you're just twinning the snails in the in the wild. So for me I don't I don't buy the, into that idea because you see you irrigate your farm every day. So you create that humidity. So if they are going to be laying, they shouldn't be following the patterns of the snails in the wild. You should have your own patterns. So it could be dry season everywhere, like right now, Hamatan. You could have a dry season, but on your farm, if it, the humid is very good, you could have snails laying in dry season that's everywhere. So it is just a, a sign for you to know that your place is not humid enough. Or the atmosphere, of course, is dry. So let me increase the humidity in my farm. That's it. <music> No, look, so this is the part that kills me in the whole interview. Now, the lady asked him, um, how many how many eggs do snails lay? And he goes like, uh, averagely, snails, uh, Akatina, Akatina lays 50 eggs. You know, that, that particular part of the video, I showed it to my farm manager and he was like, let him come for an discussion here because this does not make sense. And these things is not rec it's not it's not rocket science. Please just go on the internet. Don't let people lie to you. Just go on the internet. Search research yourself. There are research documents out there. Research documents out there. So the Katina Katina really lays averagely between 200 to 600. On my farm, we have we have counted 617 eggs from one snail at a time before now i have evidence so this this is a this is a, a picture i took in 2020 and as you can see in this picture you see that we counted 417 eggs from one snail in one count so we separate the eggs from each other so we know this this egg 
this number of eggs is coming from snail A, this, this number of um, eggs is coming from snail B, and that even also helps as it gives us enough information for us to prioritize which snail has a high fertility rate, which snail is, 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 pro is producing quality eggs than the other. We're able to do all these things. So to sit on a platform and say that snails lay an average of, I mean, no, no. When I say snail, I'm trying to um, generalize it, but I'm saying Akatina Akatina, which is the snail that he was talking about to say that they lay an average of 50 eggs is, is crazy. Of course, there are times where you have a, um, an Akatina Akatina laying maybe 70, 80, um, maybe 60. It does not mean that that is their average. They lay a lot of eggs. Their, legs, their eggs are very, very small. And then the Maginata eggs are like this. They are this big. So yes, a, a Maginata, you can have between 8 to 25. On a very good day, you can have 25 eggs from one Akatina um, Maginata. But, av but averagely, you'll be having like 10, 12, 15 from the Maginata. But when it comes to Akatina, Akatina, and then Fulika, why do you think why do you think um america and europe thinks they are so invasive because they lay a lot of eggs a lot of eggs they can lay 500 at a time that is why some countries see them to be very very invasive they multiply very fast and i don't i don't i don't, I don't expect him to know because of course he's doing greenhouse in greenhouse you don't see the results in real time of course he has never count he okay let me just maybe he has never counted akatina akatina um, um eggs so that's why he sounds this way anybody who does the trench or gallery system has the opportunity to count in real time and you know that akatina akatina and akatina fulika lay a lot of eggs please do your research don't let people lie to you i've also had them say that out of the 50 eggs that they lay, only 15 eggs or what would hatch. Where did he get that information? Please, please, please. We won't take this misinformation, no. Also in the video, a part of the video, I hear him say that uh, shells are not good for, for chicken and, and was it snails? For consumption as calcium supplements and that that was a uh, amusing because you know what if you go to Sugakope the voter side of of Ghana you know that the oyster shell that I think is one of the best um, calcium supplements for snails and chicken is not gotten from the sea his point was that the shells are coming from the sea and it contains sodium which is not good for snails but the, the oyster shells that we're using is coming from fresh water. Fresh waters. I mean, it's coming from the lake. It's coming from the river. And when you go to the, the Volta place, they are, even, they are even willing for you to come for it. Those who make the adore day. They are even willing, they are even praying that you come for these um, um, oyster shells. Because that's what we, we, we mail into calcium supplements. So making the point that the shell comes from um, the sea and it has um, sodium, please, it's not true. It is false. And again, that's why people in the greenhouses, I see some of them using eggshells. Eggshells is, is, not, is not bad, but just that just doesn't have enough calcium as compared to the oyster shells. So please, that's misinformation. Please don't mind them. There's another thing. He says, um, point of laying are snails that are 14 months old. Please, it's not true. Point of laying snails, really. Um, so in the wild, snails have to be about two years old for them to be sexually matured, right? And it takes that long because of the feeding that they, they, they depend on in the wild. Now, they don't get a lot of... Um, feed that they need in the wild because of course you know the terrain in the wild that they have to go through so when you bring them over to your farm you give them enough calcium you give them um, 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 organic feed you feed them well you're able to help them mature sexually by between eight months old ten months old a year 
in the extreme cases yes then you can have about 14 months but really point of laying snails for a katina a katina currently if you're treating your snails well feeding them well is around eight months so you do not have to wait for 14 months and then again if he would not know he says they do research in the greenhouse how are you doing your research because you're not allowed to go there and pick them up so really those of us in the trench and gallery system you know that when they are about eight months old they start laying you know it let us correct these misinformation that that is going on around eight months old when you give them enough calcium for for them to be able to produce eggs because the eggs needs calcium and also if you give them calcium their shell is able to 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 grow bigger they depend on on calcium a lot so you you realize that your snails are are stagnant in growth because you're not giving them the right feed you're not giving them the right feed and sometimes you might be giving them the right feed but they are also overpopulated so they are competing over food and so he has a deficiency and it's not able to grow big it, its sexuality is not able to mature because you're not giving it the right feed so that information again is wrong in the video he even makes a calculation mistake but uh, the lady interviewing him did not even realize he says that all the thousand snails in the greenhouse will lay 50 eggs each which is wrong and then he says if you multiply 50 by 1000 it is 15000 no it is 50000 50000 so 50000 snails and then um i also realized that this 50 50 thing he mentions is because he knows i feel these people are aware, are aware he knows that there's a huge mortality rate in the greenhouse so if he tells you that the snails will be laying around 200 100 400 500 then your expectations will be up there he wants to put you in that in that in that dark place so that you if if, if you count your snails and then you multiply by 50 you are you are you are cool but that's not a reality that's not the reality and that's why i tell people that if you're doing the trench housing system you're benefiting more than somebody who is doing the greenhouse because you have a, a better yield please if anybody tells you that that you need to wait for two years before you sell your snails please tell the person is a liar please tell the person he's a liar currently snails are being bought at three months old for food for kebab yes snails are being bought at six months old for food in fact some, most of the snails that are being exported to london the snails are around eight months old eight months old so now snail farming is interesting you don't have to wait for two years for you to sell them for feeding now they tell you these things so that he's the same person who is going to be buying from you at six cities so that when he he tells you he'll keep it for one month so when he's selling he can sell it for for seven cds for one or for eight cds eight cds for one or if he's, if he's able to to um to make them a bit bigger he puts them on the size and he and he sells them at at a, at a higher rate so please do not let um this these people lie to you please In the video he keeps saying that what if what if you have a worker and then he doesn't feed them and he doesn't feed them and he doesn't feed them i thought the greenhouse was supposed to have a, a natural habitat for them where they climb the contumery and they eat the contumery and they eat the potato leaves and so why are you worried if the if a worker is not going there and he's not feeding them so he says i'm looking at the worst case scenario look let me just do some calculation with you that i do with some people okay now in in most of the greenhouse videos where um they show to you, you see that like when they put the snails there two thousand snails in uh in, in some some nice beautiful greenhouse right now in the videos you realize that most often in every step they take you see a snail there which is a sign of um uh, um of a population but look let's let's do this math right so 2000 snails not all of them are going to be able to lay eggs so the worst case scenario will take out 20 percent so 2000 multiplied by 0 0.8 that gives you 1600 so out of the 2000 snails 1600 of them are going to lay eggs right 
Now, that 50 they tell you is a lie. But let's do the barest minimum. That's 200 eggs per snail. So, 200, so it'll be 1,600 times 200 eggs. That will give you 320,000 eggs. 320,000 eggs, right? Now, snails, if they are being treated well, they lay about six times in a year. Yes. But in the worst case scenario, we will reduce it to just three times a year, right? Just three times a year. So 300 and oh, or we should do it two times to just suit the things they tell you. Okay, so 320,000 eggs times just twice in a year. So that's times two. That's 640,000 snails. 240,000 snails in the eggs. Now, as they are as they are eggs, not all of them will hatch. Worst case scenario. Let's subtract 20% out of the 640,000 eggs. So times 0 0.8 again. It gives you 512,000 um hatchlings or juvenile snails right now as they are growing um another 20 percent of them might die they tell you five percent i am doing the worst case scenario so i'm telling you 20 percent so we'll multiply 512,000 by 0 0.8 and that gives you 409,600 snails so in one year that's greenhouse that's when you take one step there's a snail the second step there's a snail in reality, after one year, you should be getting 400,000 snails. 400,000 snails. Now, that is not the reality in, in, in the greenhouse. They, are not, they, they would not tell you. They would not, and as you did this calculation with me, you can tell that I used the barest minimum, the worst case scenario. So if in the worst case scenario, we have 400,000 snails, what number is in your greenhouse? What number of snails really is in your greenhouse? You see, and really, if you have even just half of this number, that's a 400,000. So if you have 200,000 snails in, in that space, it's huge overpopulating. And that's why, that's why they are dying. So in the greenhouse, there's a huge mortality rate. It's around 80%. And that's why he feels confident telling his snails, Akatina, Akatina is laying just 50 eggs. So there's huge mortality. And then you do not even realize because the snails, most of them in the greenhouse, they lack calcium. So they end up eating the, their fellow snails. So when a snail dies, they, they quickly finish the shell. And so by the time you even realize that a, a snail has died, I mean, you, you, I don't even know what you see to know that a snail has died because they consume the shell. The other snails consume the shell. So you come to see nothing. In few cases, or in some cases, you come to empty shells. You see, so, this whole thing is not too complex but also it's complex trying to educate people and there are people who are fighting us back those of us sharing the right information sometimes on my youtube i get a lot of threats um and facebook uh, no so i said facebook youtube takes away some of those comments uh normally like they take they hide those comments so i'm the only one who is privy to these um comments and it comes with threats and all of that if you're doing the right thing why are you threaten do you get it What's the, what's the, why, why the insults? I'm just, and I have nothing to gain from this information. I'm just helping people do the right thing. I am not a builder of trench housing system. And so I'm not benefiting from, but you are the builder of greenhouses. And so you benefit directly from it. And in the video, he says he makes seven, he made $700,000. I'm not surprised because he says he built 80 greenhouses in the previous year. Now, an average of 40,000 cities times 80 greenhouses, that's 3.2 million if we're using 10 cities to a dollar that's three hundred and twenty thousand dollars so 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 then the real business it's not even this it's not even the snail the real business is building greenhouses for people so there's there's a part of the video where where he talks about shipping live snails um to london which that one i must commend him because look it takes a lot of work to be able to export even um, frozen snails outside Ghana to the UK or to Europe. To, so to be able to export live snails um, there, I know that it's, it's entailed a lot of work, a lot of documentation, a lot of fact checking, a lot of licensing, which means a lot of investment money. So that I'm going to commend him. I'm not going to take that away from him. He's done an outstanding job 
uh, exporting and I support him for that export because look if you look at the the European market in Akatina Akatina you realize that it's it's saturated by Ivorians so I commend him for that one I won't take it away from him so um, in the video you see that they have this, a pile of snails and they are moving them here and there now when you look at every every experienced snail farmer if you look at that picture you would know that the snails are very uncomfortable it's either they're about to go on estivation or they are unhealthy or they are really starved so you look at the picture you see that for most of the snails they are alive but they are deep into the shell really if if a snail is healthy it can't fit into its shell but in the video and the snails that they are showing you see that the snails are deep into their shell and you can hardly see them you can hardly see them which is a sign that it's uncomfortable for the snails so obviously the snails living in that greenhouse are, are uncomfortable and that's why they have high mortality the snails are not being properly fed and so they have lost a lot of weight and that's what you see in the video so there are other things in the video that i could address but some of them it will sound like a, like a personal attack and i don't want that so i'm just trying to correct the wrongs right so i will end here uh, i thank you for watching this video and um, that particular video the reason why i want to talk about it is that a couple of people have shared it with me i always never never finished watching the video until um, one man mr kumi sent it to me from kuwait and it was midnight i watched it and it was difficult for me to sleep after that i watched the whole video this time so um i also realized that a hundred thousand people a whooping hundred thousand people watched that video and they took some information from it which for me is not it doesn't sit with me it's not it's not right so i had to react to it um thank you for watching this video i just hope you've learned something and please subscribe to this youtube channel uh, so that the information can go out there daily i get a lot of misinformation being sent to me uh, so if you're able to subscribe and like and share it with other people i think that the, the information goes far the right information goes far for people to stop doing the wrong things some of the the some of the activities that people do with snails you're not really doing snail farming you're actually helping snails go extinct you're killing them so um please subscribe to this youtube channel and thank you for watching this is katie samuel bye bye